Yes, we are uh, we are uh, channeling our inner outcast this morning here with everybody here on the Monday, uh, not the Monday note, but the Note Closer Show episode number 41? 40. 40. Corrienta. Um, we are excited, guys. It, it was a, a great showing last night on the Monday note. We had a, a nice, very big turnout. Uh, the replay is was uploading into our uh, video series here, but we've had a little problem with the, cell, the phones here in the offices, so they're kind of, internet is a little spotty this morning, but it'll be up later today. But anyway, uh, really want to thank everybody that joined in last night. I got to give a big shout out to Karen Bossman for providing a great question to kind of prime the pump for everybody. Also, big shout out to her and Kathy Postolite, who uh, closed on their first deal last week, which is exciting. Congratulations to them. Um, just really excited at the amount of people making offers, making deals happen, and getting deals closed. So we got an email in from DeWitt this morning, who's going to close on a deal this Thursday. All set to go for a wire. Um, welcome to the Fast Track. And new servicer. And new servicer. He's done it all within a week. He's done it all within a week. So way to go, DeWitt. We're very proud. We look forward to seeing you this weekend here in Austin at the Fast Track. So. Um, what is the t up with the title of me using an outcast symbol? So fresh and so clean, clean. One more time, everybody. So fresh and so clean, clean. There you go, exactly. Uh, that was really pathetic. You can, you can do louder than that. Okay. One, two, three. So fresh and so clean, clean. There we go. You got to have two cleans. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the topic for today's note closer show, even though we're being a little goofy here um, on this Tuesday, is to keep your business clean. All right, uh, fresh and so clean, clean, okay? Um, what I mean by that is so many investors make things messy. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I'm actually kind of going back and forth with somebody on one of our note closures Facebook groups about a deal they have. It's a mobile home loan where the borrower is deceased, the daughter has been making payments, she took over payments and no longer wants to live in the property. And this guy's just posted the details but he hasn't posted a photo and he says, well, my seller is interested in selling the note for like 40 grand, right? Well, the, lo the loan's higher than that, but he just, you can take over payments. Well, you've already told us that the borrower doesn't want to keep making payments, which is going to be a very likely to turn into a non-performing note. So why don't you, or your seller who has the relationship with the borrower, reach out, have them sign the property over, do a deed balloon or release of lien. Now you have an REO. Um, that you can basically take and sell it to anybody versus a very smaller niche market. And this guy doesn't seem to get it. He's all, well, don't you understand my buyer? My seller just wants cash. He wants out. Okay, that's great. We're trying to help that, trying to help you get cash faster. Uh, you look at the guy's Facebook profile. There's no self images. There's only a few uh, images of stuff from the, the one thing going for the guy, he's a Chicago Cubs fan. So we've got to give him that. Okay. <laughs> but there's no photo of the property. Um, nothing really giving any uh to this. It's very kind of a, he's talking about a messy transaction. When you're trying to help somebody, I don't like ask holes, all right? <laughs> People that ask all these questions and they go the opposite direction, all right? And this guy's asking for help and posting it for it and somebody's trying to give him knowledge on how to make this an easier transaction and he's fighting the deal, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, I also see a lot of note investors or real estate investors who make the deals complicated. They overthink the transaction. All right. If it's, it's if it looks like a duck, it smells like a duck, it tastes like a duck, it probably is a duck. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Exactly. Okay. You don't have to continue trying to do due diligence because that's all it is. Okay. Um, if the deal makes sense, yeah. then go with it. If it doesn't make sense, then it's a big no. Exactly. So, <laughs> I love my buttons. So great. Uh, <laughs> Steph gives me play toys in my office, which is great. But anyway, keep the deal clean. Um, if it's a complicated deal, move on. Because the more complicated it is, the more exhausting legal paperwork there is, the BKs and all this weird stuff that happens, just move on. There's more deals. 
Um, there is more deals and there's more deals coming down the pipeline. I have to give you guys big credit here. Uh, Greg, Ryan, Jennifer, Nicole, because you guys are really chomping down, breaking down a tape. We got in a 34 asset tape in yesterday from another hedge fund that our mastermind has already access to is looking at the assets. What? Oh, I was going to say, can we post the bit.ly or do you want to wait? No, go ahead and put, uh, post the bit.ly for the video. That's completely yeah. fine for it. We already posted it out there. But <laughs> the uh, we put posted the tape to our base camp group for our mastermind members to start looking at because they get first crack on. we got a few people getting ready to make some offers. Um, but we've also, we'll be doing another live NFL. Dun, 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 dun. No draft. No auction. This Thursday from basically... Uh, um, probably 12 to 2. Well, actually, we'll probably do it. Shoot. I'll probably push it back a little bit. I'll, I'll bump it to probably 2 o'clock, 2 to 4, because that'll give me a chance to hit the gym like normal. And a little bit more time for us to prepare for things. And I think we'll have a higher uh, watch rate on a Thursday afternoon versus a Thursday at noon. So, uh, But anyway, we've got 34 assets. And some of these are clean, but some of them, like I had the staff look at, and hey, four of them are boarded up. They're not so fresh and so clean, clean. Exactly. Thank you, Jen. Awesome. Good stuff. Um, so don't waste your time on that. Don't waste your time on heavy rehabs. If your first few deals, make them clean deals. Um, if you find yourself spending 20 hours doing due diligence on an asset ahead of time and you never make an offer, you just wasted 20 hours. So what you have to do is keep your business simple and what? Clean. Clean, clean. Clean, clean. clean. <laughs> And fresh, so fresh and so clean, clean. So okay. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is you get rid of all the noise, you get rid of all the junk, you get rid of all the sh junk in the tapes. What's that mean? You get rid of states you're not buying in. Okay. You get rid of states or assets that don't fit your credit uh, criteria. So if it's a mobile home and you're not buying mobile homes, you delete it off. Don't waste your time chasing every deal hole. All right. <laughs> I just made that up. We're going to have to use that. That is a good one. That is a good one. A good one. Deal. deal hole. Deal. Not deal hole. Deal, deal hole. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> hashtag deal hole. Can you push that in the comments? Hashtag deal hole when hashtag you finish with that? Deal hole. Deal hole. Yes. Um, what does that mean if you want to have reperforming assets? What does that mean? You're going to get rid of the vacant assets. Okay. If you want owner occupied assets, which are going to give you the most amount of extra strategies and options. You get rid of the stuff that's vacant and isn't owner occupied. Okay, you also want to focus on areas that where the rent rate is probably higher than the existing mortgage payment. Okay, that gives you very clean pools when you're breaking down your tapes. You should be getting rid of a lot of the fluff and narrowing it down to stuff that you can really focus on. Um, I mean, cutting away the states you don't invest in, obviously getting rid of the New York and New Jersey's right off the bat will help out dramatically for you. Okay. Another thing, trying to keep your business clean, is reach out to your vendors. Do not sit around on your hands waiting for vendors. Uh, unfortunately, we do have some collateral lags. I already responded to Leslie's email. Some people bought us at the end of the year. It looks like it's going to take about 30 days to actually get the collateral files. They're backlog. Yeah, they are backlog. They had a big end of the year push. Yeah. So I, I don't have a problem when they're reaching out to me. Don't have a problem. But one of the biggest questions, and I have to thank Karen and Kathy who shared this yesterday is what do they do once they bought a note what do they do they've seen the emails going back and forth from the servicers uh, from the previous servicer to the new servicer but who records the assignment who tells the servicer what to do and i'm like uh you guys do you yeah. get on the phone call the servicer come up with a game plan okay uh when the collateral file is shipped to you you should probably a ship it to a custodian have them record it uh, have them record the assignments. If you've got back taxes due, you got to pay the back taxes. Um, if it's owner occupied, you probably need to put forced place insurance on the property. Okay, it means calling REI Guard or Ross Diversify to talk with them. There's things you can be doing to make things done. Once you get to that point where everything's set up, though, it is kind of waiting on either your servicer to do it or your special servicer like uh, Polaris or Ross uh, uh, or the Law of Daniel, Daniel Singer through HJH Mortgage to work through those assets to give you some feedback. I mean, if you want to do the borrow reach out, I don't think that's keeping it clean, so fresh and so clean, clean. Put it in, I'm gonna be saying that all day. <laughs> so fresh and so clean, clean. Um, give it to the professionals to do for you, and that way it keeps you clean, focused on fresh assets, new tapes, fresh marketing. Is this making sense? Everybody, anybody making comments on stuff? How are we looking? No, people are pretty quiet today. People are too quiet. 
I really need feedback. I need questions. I didn't scare him because we started off with that guess. No, it was the last one. Remember when you were like, good morning. Oh, I know. I scared Michelle Hill. She's like, I was streaming through Facebook. And then you jumped out like a jack in the box. Okay? So those are the things about keeping stuff clean. You also, <clears throat> if, if, a, if a bank or a hedge fund gives you a reserve number, that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for something 20 grand less than that or 35 grand less than that. And if, the, if your number is going to be below the reserve price, it doesn't make sense to submit bids. They're going to be way low. You're really just wasting your time. If you're going to come in close, it's better to come in closer and see if you can get it that way. But if you're going to start off like 20, 30 grand less than what the reserve price is, they're not going to play ball with you. You're just going to waste time. You got to realize, A, either you need to adjust your money costs. Because some people are like, <clears throat> yes. Hey, he's making it so fresh and so clean, clean outside for us right now. Um, some people come, call me, well, Scott, you know, I've got to borrow and lend me at I got a JV partner, and me paying him 12% is not going to leave hardly any profit on the monthly payments. I'm like, you need to change that relationship. You need to go more of a split C deal, splitsies at 50 50 of cash flow and equity versus trying to do 12%. Okay? <clears throat> if you feel like you're being squeezed, A, either it's too skinny a deal or you got to readjust your money costs. And that happens all the time. It's okay to have a conversation. If you get so stuck in doing just one deal, one type of deal, that's where you're going to run into problems because you're not flexible to keep it so fresh and so clean, clean. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> what are some other great questions that people asked? Um, How do they get involved in the note draft? Um, basically drop me an email, we'll send you an NDA so you can get signed up or send you a link to get opt-in. Uh, we had, didn't know if you knew this, we had 212 people opt into the draft last time. Woo. As far as actually- For the upcoming? For the, uh, well, for the MailChimp thing that we did, gotcha. that we sent out NDAs for everybody. And so three people, one guy emailed me last night, hey man, what am I gonna get the tape from last week's deals? I'm like, are you serious? It took you a week huh? to yeah. respond? He's an older gentleman, a little bit more seasoned. <laughs> I think he's a San Francisco 49ers fan, so that's what he's used to, uh, waiting forever <laughs> for a win. But anyway, I'm like, you can't wait around uh, for a week. If I say we're going to send you the tape and you see me doing a draft and things like that, jump on the horn and give us a phone call. Jump on the email and drop us an email. My staff is really good about responding and making things happen, everybody. Um, I think I should ask those that are watching, those viewers that are watching, what is the one thing that you're not feeling so fresh and so clean, clean? What's that? What, those of you who have a not so fresh feeling this morning in your note business. <laughs> okay, I crossed the line there. My bad. Let's take it back. <laughs> what are you doing to fix that and make yourself so fresh and so clean, clean? <laughs> What's the biggest thing you need help with? Getting your business cleaner and streamlined. Now, for some of you, it may be avoiding distractions. Maybe you've got uh, a case of the drifts, all right? Uh, in that case, I would highly recommend you read Outwitting the Devil by Sharon Lecter. And I gave away my copy. Great. Oh, nope, I don't. I still have it. Outwitting the Devil by Sharon Lecter. Great book. You should go out and read it. The best, actually, I need to buy you guys all copies to, to read this. What do you think about having a book club, a once a month book club? There's Yay, great. Some people are like that. Yeah. If you would like to be a part of a book club of the month or something like that, let us know. We'll figure something out. Maybe we're buying in bulk and can get you discounts on some books. But uh, it's something we've thought about for a while. Book of the month club. No camp book club. No camp. No camp club. <laughs> no crew book club. No crew. So fresh and so clean, clean. Yeah. So fresh and so clean, clean. Exactly. Some of you need to clean up your marketing. All right. Because uh, you're not doing enough of it. It's just sitting out there doing nothing. All right, so that's what you have to realize, everybody. Is we all have mistakes. There's things I got to clean up. Steph walked in yesterday. What are all these files doing here? Because she hadn't been in the office for a little while. So it's a matter of like, oh, okay, I got a quiet title action here. Or we've got some other bills or things I got to pay. It is what it is. You kind of try to focus on things and try to keep it as clean as possible to make things work a little better. Now I'm excited to announce that uh, I will be speaking at the uh, third annual New Jersey Distressed Mortgage Expo. January 28th and 29th at the uh, Newark Airport Hilton Hotel. 
Um, like one of 20 speakers at that neck of the woods, so I'm excited about that. I think I'm gonna be on a couple panels. They asked me about marketing. Um, I think they're sitting at about 150 RSVPs, which probably means about 110. If I know the law of numbers of people telling me mm -hmm. stuff, which is fine, 100 people could be uh, still a good networking event. The enough vendors there, I could just go hang out with the vendors all day and have a good time. So uh, I'm excited about that. And then I'll also be flying back that night, it's Sunday night, to be here on that Monday and speaking at the Quest All Pro event here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be live streaming that on the 30th. Um, you guys, what is what do you need help with? What is your biggest need to make your business so fresh and so clean, clean? And that's what this is all about. These no closure shows we provide content. Um, we're still working on narrowing down this list. You guys really narrow through the uh, the big list, eight hundred list. list. You got rid of the assets that are trashed out and empty lots. Now you're diving in and checking taxes and ownership on these tapes to see what's still available, what hasn't been taxed, foreclosed out. Trying to give you guys some. So fresh and so clean, clean assets. Yeah. Uh, we on when we roll that tape out, we're gonna roll it out in a couple chunks. Um, we won't have BPOs and O and E's on those. Those are things that people will still need to provide on their own. Um, but we'll be uh, rolling that out as another note draft, note, note draft number three, number four probably, and number five in uh, February or March. So uh, I am excited. We do have an amazing group of uh, investors coming in for the fast track training this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So fun. Uh, yeah, it will be fun. Um, looking forward. It's always a blast. Got to thank our buddy Chase Thompson for coming up Friday and Saturday here. Uh, and then, of course, we've got some funny, really funny ideas uh, on the marketing madness. We're going to be doing some different things here uh, with that. That's in literally a month and a day. Um, something I noticed on Base Camp: how yeah. everyone did the push for the Facebook likes. Yeah. You know, everyone was like, "Here's my webpage. Here's my webpage," and everyone went through. We liked them, and but then. <laughs> There's nothing. Like, we like it, but then we just, you know, post There's no content. Our feed. So, what, what, what pages like, were they liking? Are they their pages? Yeah, they're, yeah, they, they're, okay. They were advertising their pages. <coughs> business pages. Like, here's my, here's my business page. Here's my business page. Yeah. But then, so we go through and we like it, but then it never pops up our news feed. So that means they're not using, they want us to like their page, but they're not utilizing. Uh, that's a great point. So, so many people start a page, it. but they don't push anything. Now, one person that's really good about it is Adam Adams. Mm -hmm. He's constantly pu pushing. He's got a great RSS feed. He's pulling different documents out that makes sense um, on the housing, apartments, commercial deals. He does a really great job with that marketing. So Adam Adams, congrats to you. If you want to go watch his page, AJA Investments. Um, I mean, that's free advertising. <clears throat> you like the page and it pops up in your feed. And so whoever is on that, it's it's a daily reminder if you have something posted. Exactly. Which is your deals, the deals you're closing, right. what you have going on. Um, nothing pop up in the feed. Right, right. One person who's doing something on a regular basis is Ed Gray. Oh, yes. Ed's Friday. Free Your Mind Friday. Free Your Mind Friday with Ed Gray. Bike Homes? Uh, bike Homes, oh, Stacey right. and Karen Wall are doing some great stuff yeah. you know, on a regular basis. So. And their emails, too. And their emails yeah, nice. are really good. Stacey and Karen Wall are doing a really great job. I'm really proud of them. Um, <clears throat> but utilize it. Yeah. What are they doing? They're utilizing and they're marketing on a regular basis, which leads to people contacting them, raising capital, getting more deals closed. Or at least it's, I mean, even... It's even just a, a, a reminder. Once you see it pop up to where it's a reminder, hey, you know, and but we're not seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't see that from everybody on a regular basis. And it doesn't have to be all business. It can always be personal. It can be personal. But That's why I tell people all the time to follow me on the different social media accounts because you'll never know what you'll see, all right? Follow me on Instagram. I've gone from like 1,000 to almost 1,100 like in a week, though. For some weird reason, it's starting. I think when you hit that thousand follower thing, it starts to opt in. People start seeing things, yeah. they're posting on a regular basis. So, um, guys, it's all about just, and that's the thing too about being so fresh and so clean, clean. Fresh is new. It's setting yourself apart from the crowd. It's also adding a different image to what people see you as. Okay, so we've all had different jobs, and we've all been surrounded by different people. This is one question that some people have asked me in the past. Is, Scott, I work at a job right now. How do I differentiate my LinkedIn page? Should I start, should I start a second one? You know, well, and the question I ask you is, what do you ultimately want to accomplish? Do you ultimately want to leave that job, or are you happy staying in that job? If you're happy staying in that job, by all means, maybe a second profile is okay for you. But I think it's better just to go ahead and add your real estate investments as a thing um, underneath. We all have outside things. We all have retirement plans. We all have investments. Maybe you're putting in your note investing. I'm an active real estate note investor as well, besides working full-time at mobile or 
IBM or Farfa Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. It's quite it's it's quite the marketing hole. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> in in that case, uh, you don't want to replicate. Have to rebuild the wheel. It's all right to use your existing profile to share what's going on. You just probably want to leave LinkedIn as not your major source for marketing. Uh, you may want to spend more time on Facebook where you can do custom audiences or custom people or, or, or meetups to make things happen for you. There's a whole variety of different ways to market yourself and not step on any toes or make your boss pissed off at you. Okay? Different ways to make things happen. You just have to kind of take action. All right, everybody. So I think that's about all we got for today. Unless there's any questions from anybody, any comments? No, not really. No? No. So, all right, guys. We'll have a wonderful Tuesday. <laughs> There we go. We just started straight with that. <laughs> so fresh and so clean, clean. <laughs> Should we do it again?